how to monetize a podcast. There are tons of ways to make money with your podcast. And I'm gonna show you a couple different things, maybe stretch your imagination a little bit and hopefully get you to gravitate towards a couple things that may end up paying you, well, hopefully a little bit more than gas money. Let's take a look. A couple things we're gonna go over by the time you're done with this video. Number one, several things to consider when it comes to monetizing a podcast. There are a bunch of things that you can do and maybe even some things that you haven't even thought of or maybe you saw something and went, hmm, I wonder what that's about. Hopefully we'll cover that for you here. And then you'll be able to make some decisions and see what direction you wanna go in. Also, there's another way to monetize a podcast that may be even faster than the usual typical podcast model. You be the judge. You ready? Let's go. First of all, there are tons of ways to monetize a podcast. Think of it as a TV show. You've got your show, TVs, if you got a hit TV show, you got a lot of viewers. A lot of viewers means you can raise the rates on the advertising. So if you've got a very popular podcast with a lot of listeners, there may be sponsors and advertisers that may want to play their ad during your podcast, and that way they get access to your listeners. Let's say th there's an opportunity to monetize with advertising through your podcast host. Many times what they'll do is just, with a very broad brush, whoever wants to buy time with the podcasting network, they just kind of sprinkle their ads throughout all of the podcasts. Some of it may, let me say, not appropriate, but a match. How about that? For example, if you have a camping podcast, you're definitely going to want tent manufacturers and backpack companies and sleeping bag companies. You're going to want those guys, definitely. But... I don't know, diapers or cleaning supplies or stuff like that, at-home COVID tests? I mean, do you really want that on a camping? I mean, when the option is, is camping gear, do you really want some of this other stuff? Well, unfortunately, with the network, what goes through the network just might end up landing on your podcast. Okay, fine, whatever. Sometimes it matches, sometimes it doesn't. Now, the other cool thing is maybe, just maybe, that if you niche down in the right way, advertisers end up coming to you. That's pretty cool. What happens if you have a really successful camping podcast and a tent manufacturer comes to you and says, we like what you're doing. We would like to talk about our tents on your podcast. Can, can we work out something? <laughs> well, heck yeah, we can work out something. So there's a million different ways that you can do this for both cash and materials as well. Maybe they'll give you a tent or two. Maybe you can do some tent giveaways. Maybe you can do you know some type of a sponsorship like that. Maybe they'll just go ahead and pay you cash for 30 second ads or something like that. Maybe they'll pay you 10 times the amount of cash for a live endorsement from you for a 30 second ad. How about that? There are many different ways to work out the advertising on a podcast. Something really simple you could do is, before you even get to the chance of breaking the threshold of monetizing through advertising, you could set something up right up from day one, like buy me a coffee. Those are where you can take donations. Very simple way to say, hey, if you like the podcast, can you send me two bucks? Can you send me five bucks? You know, I got to pay somebody to edit or I need to buy new equipment or whatever it is, you're ultimately going to have expenses. There's hosting expenses, editing time, all that kind of stuff that goes with it. That's a very easy way to help offset those costs directly from the listeners and you don't have to worry about, especially when you don't have a lot of listeners and you don't have a lot of podcast episodes under your belt yet for advertisers to find you or to come calling. Go straight to your listeners. See if they'll donate two, three, five, ten bucks. That's a nice way to make a few bucks. Something else you can do is maybe set up a private club or behind the scenes type of thing for your listeners. For a donation of say $10 a month, a membership group, they get behind the scenes content, additional content, maybe stuff that was taking place that got edited out of the uh, podcast that didn't make the final episode, or if you happen to have a, uh, a guest on board, maybe a famous guest that they're particularly interested in. Maybe you've got two, three, four, five extra questions that you asked after the recording stopped and this you made uh, part of the membership exclusive. There are different ways that you can monetize it and, and entice people to, to end up enjoying what even more that you have to offer. And these folks who are in the private group 
Maybe you'd like to have a live event in the future. They get priority seating. They get priority tickets. They get a little bit of a discount maybe the next time you have a get together. Let's say you end up doing a podcast tour. Their ticket price and stuff like that will help pay for the gas in the hotel and whatever you're doing around town. And then you stop in their city and you have a little get together in their town. It's a great way to get out, meet your listeners and monetize a little bit of the, uh, the podcast. Of course, one of the most common things you can do is swag, get some merch. Get some stuff out there and on the streets. It's some great advertising as well. Anything from coffee mugs to pens to hoodies to uh, bumper stickers. I mean, you name it. Whatever the case may be, just think, I mean, come on, it's merch. What, uh, what else do you need to know? And a lot of this stuff you can set up for free and then you don't have to worry about stocking an inventory and keeping 20 different sizes or anything like that. They get printed and shipped out as people order them. So that's a really nice deal. And then the people who do the printing and the shipping, they just take a little bit off the top. You get a few bucks on the back end as it's being shipped out. Boom, everybody's happy. It's really cool. That's a great way to get some merchandise out there. And you know, it's some conversation pieces. Hopefully you'll end up picking a few, picking up a few more listeners from discussions that people are having about their new hoodie or their new coffee mug. And like I mentioned earlier, just a moment ago, there are some meet and greet events. Well, if you turn that in, and again, you can do this as a separate standalone event or maybe something exclusive for your membership group. You can have them fly into you. If they're willing to make the time and the investment, who are you to say no? But you can monetize it that way as well and have private dinners, uh, a meet and greet, a maybe a special broadcast with them in the studio. There are a whole bunch of different ways to make it much more exclusive and rub elbows and, and get to meet the people who have been uh, listening all this time and supporting you. So if your business is thinking about adding a podcast or maybe even a YouTube channel or maybe a video podcast, be sure to subscribe because that's what we do here. We try to get these things going for your business so you can use them to actually bring in clients. Don't miss it. We go over cameras and lighting and microphones and editing and stuff like that. Anything that we can do to help you get up and running, that's what we want to do. Get you over that tech hump and uh, hopefully reduce the learning curve as well. That's the big thing. So be sure to like and subscribe and let's keep going. Now the flip side of this, I just mentioned it, I kind of teased it just a second ago. The second business model, the first one is kind of like the TV model. Listeners get you advertising. And then there's all the merch that comes off of that. Maybe even, what, lunch boxes, <laughs> stuff like that. The second business model is podcasting for your business, where the first one is based on a lot of listeners. The second one is actually irrelevant to the number of listeners because what you're really doing is it's not just a podcast for entertainment's sake, but you're actually trying to find more clients for your company. What is it that you do? Are you a coach? Are you an advisor, a consultant, a, a financial advisor? I mean, what's, what, what do you do? This is a great way to talk about what you do to their benefit. Don't be trying to brag about yourself, but kind of like, you know, teach what you do, teach your content, teach what it is, your philosophy and how you do things. That's what ends up bringing in more clients and customers. Whereas for the advertising aspect, you need hundreds, if not tens of, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of listeners before that starts to pay off. As, as a podcast, as a business enhancer, heck, it only takes 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, maybe 30 listeners before somebody steps up and it says, you know what? I like the way you operate. I want to do it your way. Can, can you do that for me? And now you've got them as a client. That's what it's for. It's to develop a client relationship and get more people to come to you for your goods and services. So that's a very different business model. One, you're going for listeners. The other one, you're going for a much more one-on-one -on -one type of uh, relationship and you don't need a lot of listeners. So think about that. It's a really good way to grow your business. So if you're gonna turn this podcast into a business venture, I would strongly suggest you get a copy of my podcasting uh, it's kind of like the beginner's book. It's engaging your audience, the three secrets to skyrocketing your podcast success. Down below in the description is a link. Click on that link and get your free copy of Engaging Your Audience right now. I'm Nick Natarello with AdWise Creative. Thank you for watching.